good morning. So my name is Stefan. I'm a teacher of computer science at KTH, which is the technical university here in Stockholm. I consider myself first and foremost a software developer. So this will be words from a software developer's perspective. Business people and marketing people are my enemies. No, not really, but I'm a bit curious. How many of you in this room would consider yourself first and foremost software developers? And how many of you are business people? Quite a few. And who is doing marketing primarily? None. So we can say whatever we like about marketing people. That, that's good. So uh, this thing is, uh, also, I didn't bring any chocolates. And <laughs> to be quite honest with you, I don't even have a wife. So, and I don't have a, uh, my own software company. But I do have a really cool URL, and this is my own. It's called github.com your basic slash API. And what happened here is that my computer froze. So I really can't change desktops here. I have no idea. So I can't show you my slides, but that's not a problem. I can talk anyhow. So don't worry. Don't worry. We'll fix this. Uh, because what I'm going to do here today is to, to tell you that this is an article and it's also a, a, a bunch of small uh, projects with uh, what I hope are interesting APIs. So if you're interested in this and if you like what I'm talking about, please go visit this uh, GitHub repository and take a look. And if you look at the title of the talk, it's Effective API Design with Go. And the reason is that most of the code is actually Go code. And the other reason is that the article actually talks about API design quite a bit by giving examples from programming languages, because programming languages is, of course, uh, to a large extent, APIs. And they have the good thing about them that we, we're all familiar with them. So we can talk about them and we can have strong opinions about them. We know things that aren't working with our programming languages. So it's a nice thing to talk about when you talk about API design. So, just curious, uh, who of you would like, to, like me to say a little bit about Go? Would that be an interesting topic? Not really, a few people. And um, uh, so, we will talk about APIs because that, that's the title. So, my plan is to, to give you a few war stories and tell you what's, uh, what's on this site, if we could actually access it. We'll give it one more shot. It is completely dead. We, we, we'll close this one and see. Ah, that took me to the, to, to, to the, to the other desktop. Great. So, so the contents of this site is, first of, first of all, it's this little text. And it's also a few uh, software projects that you may want to look at. And two of them are for, uh, for teaching purposes primarily, even though you might be able to use this, this code. And the third one is intended to be, to be a useful library. It's a general purpose graph library written in Go because I didn't find a good one. I looked, at, I looked at several ones of them and they all had severe API problems in different ways. So, I was try so I'm sticking my neck out, I was trying to do it better. So. And I'm also talking about what I did and what I didn't in this text. I, I won't go into technical details today, today because we only have 20 minutes after all. And the text though, uh, is divided into several parts. The first one is the really basic stuff. I was trying to think about this. Are there some things that we definitely can agree on, but that we still seem to fail on on a regular basis? So I decided to call these things commandments just to once again to stick my neck out and perhaps start a discussion. So these are five of my favorite pet peeves and things that I believe are actually important and things that may seem extremely simple, but my, in my experience, we actually fail. We, we quite frequently fail at these things, more or less. So the first one is the obvi obvious ones, and um, uh, we heard it uh, on the slide just a few minutes ago. Tell me what this thing is. So what, what I mean here is when you go to a typical API, you, you are being told that now we support uh, version foo of this and version bar of this, and you get all kinds of interesting things. But, you, but quite often we programmers forget to say, what is this thing? Have you ever seen that? Have you ever been to a GitHub repository not, not, not being able to figure out what it is? Yeah. I, I, I don't know we can do bingo, but, this, but my guess is that it's a lot more than 50% of all, even high-quality projects that somehow fail at answering this really basic question. So, 
well, I don't. There isn't much to say about that. And so let's cut to the chase and go and go and go to 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 the big elephant in the room here, which is of course what we're all struggling with when we're trying to design APIs. We can't change them. If you make a mistake and you publish it, you're stuck with it, possibly forever. If you're a success, like say the Java programming language, and if you dis if you if you gave an API, this this is how you do you handle files in Java, you will have to support that forever. If you didn't do it right, well, tough luck. The only thing you can do is to add more stuff and more stuff and more stuff, and then you end up with Java nine today, or is it ten? Eight, nine, ten, nine, nine, perhaps. I think nine is good. It's only a few weeks old, and it has a lot of, of exciting stuff. And there is so much stuff, ways to 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 do a simple file access that most of us fail. We we try to 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 read a text file, and if we just do if we just look at Stack Overflow, we will be told to do it the wrong way. We will get the the, the character encoding wrong, probably. For example, because there are there are hundreds of ways of doing them, and most of them uh, give you a code, a, a character encoding uh, taken out of the operating system, who decided that for no obvious reason. For just to give you one example, a war story here, and and of course that's easy to say, uh, don't change it. But but how do we do that? How do we get it right? Um, I don't know. My only solution is one that business people don't like much. That is to, but software people like, give it time. Don't rush it. That's easily said. It's really hard to do if you have to, to deliver. You'd have to deliver next week if you do Agile. So this is not what you typically end up doing at work, I guess. If you work at a university, you can, can do this a little bit. <laughs> But still, it makes business sense as well, because if you rush your API, you end up with something uh, which isn't very good, and you can't change it. And the reason you can't change it is because you have customers. If you're successful, you have customers. If you change it, you break their code. So this is kind of the fundamental idea here, and the tough one. So let's go back again to, 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 to this. I called it, call it number five, don't change it. It's not just enough to not change it. You also have to convince people that this is what you're going to do. You're in, the, you're in the business of trust when you do APIs. Because if they don't trust you, if they aren't absolutely 100% sure that they, that they won't throw you under the bus, uh, remove the stuff uh, a week from now, you won't, uh, people won't trust you, they won't use your product, they won't use your API. And the trust is, of course, something you earn over time by doing the right thing. And it's, but you can also do some things front, uh, up front. You can tell people, you can give them a formal document saying that this is what this product does, uh, a compatibi compatibility policy, or, if you like. I think you should have that, even for a simple one. A very simple way to give a compatibility uh, uh, policy is to, uh, to say that we are using, using versioning numbers the ways they are supposed to, to be done. In a semantic way, these numbers actually aren't marketing hype. They actually say something ab about, about the state of this software. So 1.0.0 means the very first version where I promise not to change it again. Then it's not alpha or beta anymore. This is the one. Uh, we are sticking with that one. And the third number, uh, how many of you, by the way, do you use semantic versioning? In? Not everyone. Interesting. So this is a very good, good way to, to build trust for your product. Say, these are the numbers that actually matters for engineers and software. Then you, can, then you can call them leopard and marshmallows and stuff like that for marketing purposes as well, if you like. But please don't mess with the version numbers. Be, because we want to be able to trust them if, we, if you're a software developer. So if it's 1.2.8, this means that there is more stuff in this version than in version 1.0, because, because we, the second number is a 2, meaning that the, there are improvements or added functionality, but the basic stuff from 1.0 is still there, it's still working, it's still working the same way. And the third digit here means that this is, a minor, this is a minor update. There is nothing fundamentally new here. It's just bug fixes or perhaps minor performance improvements, that, that kind of stuff. And the very first number should never change. Because changing the first number means that you're offering a new API, you're offering a new product, which isn't backwards compatible with the first one. So that's like going from, from uh, uh, Python 2 to Python 3. We didn't like that one, did we? 
those are two different programming languages with the same name, but different version numbers, which, which makes for a, a lot of pain for software developers. Java 9, is, is that true as well? Java actually do have, the problem with Java, and the problem is, of course, because it's such an old language, is that they do have a, if you, if you look for that compatibility policy, you find a whole web, uh, web uh, site with lots, uh, I mean literally hundreds of documents, uh, exclaiming what, 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 they, what, they, what, they, what they intend to do and what they, uh, what they claim to do. It's quite difficult to get a hand on that. And that's of course because there is such a big legacy. The, 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 the system has been around for so, for so long. If you want to look at a, a new system, I, I suggest go to, go to, the, to, the, to golang.org, the Go programming language, and take a look at their po uh, 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 compatibility policy. Uh, it's, it's excellent in my opinion. And they've actually been, they've been able to stick to it so far. On the other hand, that language is only 10 years old, so it's, they have a much easier time. It's also a much smaller language by design. So, talking about trust, uh, uh, there were a few business people here. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story of, a story of trust. Uh, and, uh, and the reason is that if your if your if your product is an API, your customers are are software developers, and with software developers, we don't forget if you don't treat us well. And I give you one example. Uh, Apple back in the days, maybe 15 years ago or so, all of a sudden there, there was a new, uh, a, a new version of the operating system. No, not that the phones weren't around in those days. It was, it was, it was, it was the desktop version of, of, of the OS. And all of a sudden there wasn't Java support there. They've just skipped the Java virtual machine. It wasn't there. They didn't tell us that, that, that this was going to happen. And also when we asked, they wouldn't tell us whether this was just temporary, if they were working on it, if it would ever come back. So what they did was to throw all their Java developers under the bus, just like that. Do you think I trust Apple to this day? I'm a software developer. Fortunately, I didn't have a Java product for Apple at the time. But still, I haven't forgotten, this is not an, uh, an Apple laptop. <laughs> I'm just telling you business people about this. We do remember. Isn't this true? Because there are quite a few developers here. We don't like that. And sometimes we get to make those decisions about what platform to use. And, uh, and we remember. And if we don't get our right platform, maybe we change companies because the market is so good for, for software developers at this point. Yeah, I'm, I shouldn't be doing it. Still. How much time do we have? Roughly? Ah, oh, great, great. So, let's look at the give it time thing. Uh, the other side of this coin is perhaps the well-known advice to eat your own dog food. And most of you are familiar with it. It means that use your own product, because if you're using your own product, you will find a lot of problems with it. And I was digging and I found that this guy here uh, is supposedly the first guy to have said that. If you're my age and grew up in the United States, you saw him in dog food commercials uh, back in the 70s. So this guy actually did claim that he was eating his own dog food. Here is a much nicer looking guy uh, who is Don Knuth, so he, who by some people are considered the father of, uh, of uh, modern computer science. Uh, he says the following about the same topic. He says that he, he mentions four different uh, different roles in a software project. If you're a, if you're the designer, if you're a guy who who is implementing the thing, if you're a the first large scale user, and if you're the guy who writes the first user manual, he says it so happens that for his first big software project, he was doing all four of these things. And even if, of course, you can't expect a single person to do all these things. But, but if you have people in your, product do, in your product doing all these four things, you will, you will be a lot wiser because you will get a lot of feedback that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. He claims, and he's not, not a guy of hyperbole, he's a mathematician, he claims that uh, uh, because he, he participated in all of these, he said literally hundreds of improvements would never have been made because I would never have thought of them or perceived why they were important 
in the first place. So this is, of course, uh, also also very true. Here's another idea which I believe maybe both business people, marketing people and software engineers can, design, can agree on. It's good if you are able to keep things simple because it's easier, easier to work with simple APIs, it's easier to work with simple tools. Perhaps marketing people would say we, we have to add features because we can't sell this if it doesn't have A, B and C. And perhaps I'm right, and that's the problem here. But if, if we as software developers get to choose, we like to keep things simple. Or maybe not. How many of you are C++ developers, by the way? No hands? One? One guy? So that's, of course, if, if, you, if you get really proficient at a tool and good at it, that's kind of also a, a, a benefit when, if you're looking for, pro, for projects. If they, are, if they are stuck with C++ or for some reason have, have, used, have that design decision, of course, it's good if you know the language. But I must say that in my experience, it's so nice to be able to, to use a language or at least a subset of a language that, that everyone in the project have decided upon. And if this subset is very small and lean, but still not big enough to actually be useful, so you can, can get stuff done, then you're in, in such a much then you're in, in a much better place. And to give you uh, maybe two Go examples, because some people did, uh, were interested in Go. Uh, that's, a, that's a new language, relatively. It's 10 years old, uh, almost exactly. The first email saying, let's, let's, write, uh, let's make a new programming language was sent uh, 10 years ago. And the idea was, well, the idea, uh, this was Ken Thompson and, uh, oh, I'm terrible with names. And two other guys. <laughs> Ken Thompson was the guy who, who invented B that later became C. He also was, was the one, perhaps the prime force behind Unix, so he's an old-timer. And his, his, his design decisions uh, were good at the time, and we had to live with them for a very long time. So he has a lot of experience, and he has learned a, few, a lot of things that he couldn't change, but he would want to change. So at a late uh, stage in his career, he decided, let's start from the scratch when it comes to programming language. Let's try to do it right. Right. Let's only put in the things that uh, uh, that we that we know are safe, and that way we may got things roughly correct. So he ended up uh, with him. There was also it was it was also Robert Pike. Uh, and Robert Griesemer were the two other guys. And all three of these were very opinio opinionated people with a lot of experience. And they sat down in a room and they say, if not all three of us agree on this, it won't be part of the language. So that, that was their design method methodology. And it was very painful. All three people, if you ask about them, they hated it. They said they would never do it again. They hated each other and they had to meet for several hours every day. And their pet ideas were thrown away. It's terrible to do that kind of thing. But they ended up with a very, very small language with very few features. And that's what I like about it. And I've been using that extensively for the last three or four years. And I'm really not missing anything from, from my Java experience. I wrote mostly Java code before that. So I think that's a good example of where you can make things simple. It's really hard to do, but when you get it roughly right, you're in a very good position. So maybe that's a good, time, good uh, place to stop. Yeah. I have, if, if I want to. I have, okay, <laughs> okay. So let's, let's, let's talk about two design decisions in Go, which are primarily API design issues. The first one is garbage collection. Is there an API there? I think the great part about it is that the API is pretty much null and void. You, don't, you, you never call the garbage collector. If you look at Go, it's actually not even part of the language spec. The language spec, which is only 50 pages long, doesn't even mention the concept of garbage collection or, man or memory management. It's entirely transparent from that perspective. There is a way to look at it if you need for profiling purposes in, 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 in the OS package, and that's about it. And I think there is one parameter that, that you can, that you can 
that you can change, and that's about it. And, they, and of course they don't solve all problems, but they solve, solve a lot of problems, and they do it without an API, and isn't that the perfect thing? You don't have to expose anything to the, to the user, and you do all the stuff, and there is lots of stuff there, and hideously complicated stuff, and, and many, many uh, man years of work uh, going on there, but you don't see it as a user. The other example from Go of a, what that I consider a really uh, great uh, API design that is the way to create a new thread, uh, a new uh, a new process running in parallel with the rest of the program, uh, and that's the reason uh, I use this cheesy art here for for the very first picture, because the, the, because the way the, the, this, this is the syntax for starting a new thread in Go is the, the word you write Go and then you do a function call. And then that's a new process running in parallel with the first one. And that's all. They don't give you any other options. There are no thread groups. There, there, are, there are no daemon threads. There, are, there is no nothing. That's it. It seems very, very limiting. Can you live with that? I mean, I've been, I've been doing parallel programming in Java and all of these things. I don't have no priorities. And it turns out I could do everything I did in Java with just this simple concept. It's still not easy to do, to do concurrent programming, obviously. But I get that there is so less things to so many less things to worry about, and that is such a pleasure. So perhaps if there is one thing I want to say today is that simplicity is key. That's something we should strive for. And now my time is up. Thank you.